Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about preparedness and specifically asynchronous communications for preparedness. What you're looking at now is a Winlink session and more specifically, Pat Winlink running on a Raspberry Pi with the ICOM IC705 QRP radio and the Samsung Galaxy S5e tablet acting as a wireless screen. Now, when we normally talk about data communications for preparedness, it usually means one person is on one side of the keyboard with their radio, and another person is someplace else in the world uh, in front of their radio and keyboard, happily typing away in real time. The only problem with this methodology or this way of communicating is we are not always on the radio or in front of the radio at the same time as the person we'd like to talk to. So we need to formulate a methodology of communicating with amateur radio operators and non-amateur radio operators alike. So this is the topic of today's video, using WinLink email or radio email for reliable asynchronous communications. As always, if you stick with me a while, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign narrative. There are two pretty difficult questions to answer when we're talking about communications for preparedness. The first of those questions is how do we communicate with people who may or may not be amateur radio operators? And the second is how do we make sure the people we want to communicate with will receive messages or information we send to them even though they're not on the radio? Now, when it comes to asynchronous communications for preparedness, one of our best tools in amateur radio is the ability to send email over the air. Now, using WinLink email isn't that much different than uh, using Google or Hotmail or any one of these other type of email services. The difference is we use our radios and a hybrid network to get those emails out into the world. Now, I suppose one of the least known features of WinLink email is the ability to send emails to amateur radio operators and non-amateur radio operators alike. For amateur radio operators, all they need is their radio and the data mode equipment they would normally use for any of the other data modes they use. Now, getting those emails to non-amateur radio operators, of course, they're going to need an email address and they're going to have to find a way to get access to their emails in order to communicate with you. The good news here is communications over email is bi-directional. You can communicate with them off of the radio network and they can communicate with you back on the radio network. So what you're looking at now is my buddy the Gunny sending me an email from his Gmail account. Now, the gunny doesn't need any technical knowledge other than knowing how to send an email. That email is going to make its way over the hybrid network, partially from the internet from the gunny, and then making its way to the closest RMS to me. So here comes the asynchronous part of these communications. I don't know that the gunny has sent an email to me, but I'm going to check my email periodically as I do anyway. So at the moment, I'm connecting to an RMS gateway in Norway. I'm going to use that RMS gateway to see if I actually have any emails waiting for me and download those emails over the radio to my local computer. Now, I made the mistake of connecting to the wrong RMS gateway for the time of day. So the speed isn't as fast as it normally would have been. I'll show you a little bit faster one later on, but let's use some movie magic to get the Gunny's emails into my radio and local computer. Now, while we're waiting for these emails to come in, there's nothing to stop me from reading the other emails, which are already in my inbox. Which reminds me, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who have helped with WinLink testing over the past couple of weeks. Now, I'm not new to WinLink, but the testing we've done over the past few weeks has really allowed me to step up the capability. In fact, because of this testing, what I like to do now is start off my day by actually checking my WinLink emails over the radio as a secondary email system. So I check my messages, I read my messages, and I reply to my messages daily over the radio because that's much more effective training 
than keeping our gear stored until field day comes around and deploying it once or twice in a year. So I would also suggest that uh, you all start to do the same things. Use your WinLink email, not perhaps as a primary email, but use it regularly, use it daily. Use it so that you know it like the back of your hands. So, the session is complete. We log off of that RMS gateway and I see we have two new messages from the Gunny. Let's check those messages and then send off a reply. So the Gunny is letting me know that they're heading out in a couple of hours and they should reach my location within 18 to 20 hours. He's also asking me if there's something I need, and absolutely there is. So let's go ahead and open up a reply window. We're going to let the Gunny know that yes, we got this message, and we're also going to answer his question about anything else he should bring up. Now, just as it was for the Gunny sending his email through Google Mail, this is absolutely seamless to me. I mean, if I wasn't using a radio, I wouldn't know that this was any different than a normal email client from any other service. So let's reply to the Gunny's email and let him know that uh, we'd really appreciate it if he brought some root beer. Now before we send off that message, we'll give it the once over to make sure there's no mistakes or misleading information. Once we're satisfied, we'll go ahead and post it to the outbox and then we'll start another WinLink session to a faster RMS gateway, the one I should have used earlier. So now rather than that station in Norway, we're going to connect to Oscar Hotel 6, India Joliet. This India Joliet gateway is about 250 clicks south of me, and he's my doomsday gateway for WinLink email. Now I'm connecting to his gateway using a modem called Vara HF, and this is the unlimited bandwidth version. Now you can see, compared to the station in Norway, if you connect to the right RMS gateway during the right time of day on the right band, you can get some pretty incredible speeds with your radio email. You might also bear in mind, I'm using 10 watts to a station that's 250 clicks away. Using an NVIS antenna system, it's a wire antenna, NFED. The length is about 73 feet or 22 meters and it sits about 3 meters or about 3 yards above ground. So realistically, if you're running WinLink email off grid or in the field, you don't need a lot of power. You don't need some crazy elaborate antenna system. And there's no need for some large elaborate radio. Ultimately, what we need to know is the maximum usable frequency, the correct antenna configuration for the gateway stations we're trying to reach, an up-to-date listing of those gateway stations which you're most likely to hit, and a willingness to routinely test and experiment the possible connections around you. Now, some people may be critical of WinLink because it also routes through the internet, but there are radio-only networks on WinLink. In addition to these radio-only networks, there's also peer-to-peer -peer connections allowing two stations to connect to each other to exchange email. Now, before we move on, let's talk a bit about the RMS gateways. Both WinLink Express and Pat WinLink for Linux and the Raspberry Pi offer an up-to-date selection of RMS gateways to connect to. In this example, I have them all sorted by their path reliability, highest first and then lowest. Now, I found by sorting them this way, it doesn't always work well for me because I'm using an NVIS antenna. So there's no point in showing me stations which are more than five or 600 kilometers away. And now you can see we've sorted them by distance, closest to furthest. Sorting the list this way gives me a very accurate estimate of the stations which can hear me and which I can hear. On the other hand, I have found when I'm operating out in the field with a different type of antenna configuration I normally use, it is best to go ahead and use that path reliability to figure out which stations may be best to connect to. Now, before we close down part one of the WinLink for asymmetric communication series, 
Let's take a moment to take a look at a few of the different radio and equipment configurations I use for Winlink. What you're looking at now is Winlink Express running on a Windows 10 laptop. The laptop is a Lenovo Yoga C940. I use it for video editing sometimes or also taking it out when I'm operating away from home. Powering Winlink Express is the Zygu X5105. For cat control and audio, I have the XGG comms Digimode 4 interface. It's a single USB cable coming from the radio to the laptop. So this is just one possible configuration. Now we have a very similar configuration. It's again, Winlink Express running on my Windows 10 laptop, the Lenovo uh, C940. But the radio this time is the ICOM IC705. Now, although traditionally I don't like using a Windows machine for critical communications, there are some benefits. This definitely isn't the time or place to talk about that, but it does sound like it would make a very good new video. Now, sticking with the IC705 for a moment, this is my Raspberry Pi based system. It's got the IC705 as the radio, it's got a a Samsung Galaxy S5e tablet, which acts as a wireless screen. It's running packed WinLink, and it's got a Raspberry Pi running all the software. Now, the Raspberry Pi based system is the most energy efficient system that I have. I know there are some of you who are going to say, yeah, but if you add all these different things together, the current consumption would be higher than uh, if using a laptop. This is untrue. Unfortunately, what we gain in energy efficiency, we actually lose in configuration and system complexity. At the end of the day, we need to take a look at our own individual requirements. Once we do that, we can start the process of researching the possible solutions which are fulfilling our portable or field radio requirements. And that's the end of part one. There's lots of information in the description, guys, so don't forget to take a look at that. Once again, a huge thanks to all of you who constantly provide help and feedback with WinLink testing. There really are no words to describe the level of appreciation I have for all the help. With that, I say rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.